Hi, my name is Subhashish. I'll be talking today about a collaboration that uh, made 14,000 books in India's Odia language uh, discoverable and searchable online with full text. To give a little bit of context about Odia as a language, it is spoken in the uh, state of Odisha and the diaspora living elsewhere. Um, and uh, it's one of India's 22 official languages and it's spoken by 45 million people. The uh, state of digital archives in uh, Odia, um, there, uh, there have been minimal uh, digital archiving efforts and uh, the ones that exist have issues with non-standard cataloging and web indexing uh, is not done for the books, for the full text. Um, Srujanika, one of the nonprofits that was established in the 1980s, started uh, scanning and archiving books from 2006 and eventually established this uh, platform called Odia Bhuhava, which would become the largest and longest standing digital public archive in the language. Uh, later, the Odisha state government established the Odia Virtual Academy, and, uh, and that hosts about 5,000 books. Odia Bhuhava, on the other hand, hosts about uh, 13,000 plus books and periodicals. Susanika eventually has decided to move on from uh, active archiving. Another organization called Prachin is taking over. One of Susanika's volunteer, Jivan Kumar Panda, is in charge of Prachin's archiving uh, initiative. The ODI Bhava has a few particular challenges. Um, it hosts all the books on Google, uh, Google Drive, and these are scanned uh, PDFs. The uh, image to text conversion is not done using OCR because of that the books are not uh, indexed online. The full text is not indexed online. And hence this uh, leads to um, the books not being available when people search. So they're not discoverable and searchable. Um, the books don't have permalinks for each book and uh, that means this uh, this is difficult for uh, anyone to cite those books using a permalink. Um, so there's definitely impact on Wikipedia in terms of creating content and citing, but also largely for other users. On the other hand, uh, Odia Virtual Academy uploads their books as EPUBs. That also um, um, doesn't allow any search uh, of the text and web indexing. Um, the these problems that I saw for many years um, helped me uh, think about a solution, think about a way to uh, make these books available uh, for the general public and also for myself as a Wikipedian. So um, I started this initiative in 2021 to pilot creating metadata for the books first. And then I approached the Servants of Knowledge, who is a collaborator of public resource, and they upload, they scan and upload a lot of books in different Indian languages uh, on the internet archive, and they helped uh, re-archive the Odia Bibo and uh, Odia Virtual Academy books and periodicals. And the metadata that I had created in both English and Odia were also added. Um, so with the metadata, the book titles uh, were available uh, on the Internet Archive, um, and I was able to create 3,500 new Wikidata entries. Uh, I was able to cite the uh, the books that were uploaded on uh, the archive, and that helped creating more citation. And uh, later, I added authority control data, uh, such as VIAF, to uh, the authors. Um, and uh, this inspired, the learning inspired creating another project in 2023 uh, for the remaining books, both on Odia Biho and Odia Virtual Academy. So uh, after I created the um, metadata, um, the uh, SOK, the Servants of Knowledge project was able to uh, re-archive these books. And now we have about 14,292 titles re-archived. The impact of this work um, is multifold. First, the books that were OCR'd using Tesseract are now web indexed because the image to text conversion was done uh, and the text was uh, web indexed. 
so anyone uh, can search a keyword uh, that is available in the in the in the content of the books and they would be able to find these books each book has a unique archive um, id so that's easy to cite using um, zotero which is also integrated into wikimedia projects and the discoverability for readers and wikimedia contributors has increased there are some gaps that still exist the um, accuracy of OCR varies with scan quality and the typefaces used for the last training in 2019. So more training is required for Tesseract. Um, and then um, Tesseract is also not trained for old typefaces, such as the letterpress typefaces used in the 1800s and 1900s, uh, all the way to 1960s uh, and later as well. Um, the uh, the number of books that exist on the archive have to have Wikidata entries, uh, and the authors also have to have Wikidata entries. That is yet to be done. Um, that said, the key takeaways are um, tech infrastructure could prohibit access to knowledge. It could have grave impact on leadership and uh, Wikipedia and open knowledge projects. Um, the collaboration that I shared today um, is uh, largely lacking that, and that is required collaboration between digital libraries and archives and Wikimedians. Mm -hmm. um, and OCR engines have to be trained with more number of typefaces. Mm -hmm. So that apart, uh, the future directions would include um, improving OCR accuracy. That is basically training Tesseract and similar open source engines with more number of typefaces, enhancing Wikipedia and Wikidata entries, uh, strengthening collaboration for better archiving. Um, that is the other larger goal. Thank you so much.